Along with the extreme heat, we are tracking Hurricane Lee in the Atlantic as it could potentially grow into the season's first Category 5 storm. For more, CBS News senior weather and climate producer David Parkinson is here in the studio. So, David, tell us more about Hurricane Lee. Yeah, so Hurricane Lee is uh, expanding at a rapid clip. So it was a Category 2 this morning at 11 a.m. And now, believe it or not, the storm is already up to a Category 4 with 135 mile, 130 mile an hour winds. Look at this beast. You've got a beautiful eye center of the storm there that is really well formed. It's a very healthy storm, and it's over incredibly warm water. So I am expecting this to continue to develop and it will likely hit category five strength within the next 12 hours. In fact, if you take a look at the official track from the National Hurricane Center, again, category five storm by Friday a.m. And then Friday afternoon, it's even stronger, 165 miles an hour. I mean, that is a wickedly strong storm. And then even as we head into Saturday, Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, it does weaken. That's good news as it heads towards the United States. Uh, but the key point to make is here is that this is an incredibly devastating storm that is right now away from any sort of land and is likely to stay that way for a little bit of a while. But then we want to talk about sort of what the scenarios are. So we've actually got two storms that we're watching. We're watching Lee and then we're watching another storm. That will be your M storm still to come if it develops. So the question is, where does it go? Here's a couple of little scenarios and little things that we're watching here in the weather department. So the first is where we have a cold front coming off of the East Coast. So with that cold front, you would potentially have the storm tuck underneath it, and then it's got nowhere to go because it's essentially being pulled along underneath the cold front. And that's where you could have your potential impacts for the East Coast, be it Long Island, Cape Cod, uh, down East Maine, or into Nova Scotia. That's scenario number one. The cold front moves quickly. Also, we're tracking where there's going to be a high pressure system that's over the Great Lakes, where exactly that one sets up, because as you know, air goes around in a clockwise fashion around a high. And so the question is, where exactly does it play in between that? And then, of course, where is this other storm? Because if the other M storm keeps it further away, uh, it keeps itself further away, then it's got a little bit more room to run. If not, it actually pushes it towards the coast. So that's one scenario. The second scenario that I want to point out here is uh, one where it actually does not get caught up by the front. Instead, it stays out to sea because the front is slow to arrive. So in that case, presumably, it's not being pushed by another storm. It's not being caught by the cold front. And in this case, the best possible scenario is it goes right up uh, towards Newfoundland and Labrador. So that is really what we're watching. But the important point is all of this is late next week, Elaine. Wow. So we've got a lot of time. We're eight days at least from any U.S. impacts. And so as a result, we'll take that time to refine the forecast. Nobody is in the clear completely yet, but I'd say you're probably at less than a 20% chance of a U.S. landfall. And in terms of anything south of the Outer Banks, your chances, will not zero, are pretty darn close to them. All right. We know you're going to continue to watch this very closely. David Parkinson, David, thank you. No problem.